All right, so let's first start talking about uh, voltaic or galvanic cells. All right, and we'll use that uh, first equation that we just uh, talked about, that spontaneous redox reaction between zinc and copper. So we had zinc being oxidized by copper and producing copper solid and zinc <laughs> two plus. Uh, what happened? Okay, so we're, what are we gonna do? We're going to physically separate our half reactions. So what were our half reactions? Let's look back. So our half reaction, our oxidation half reaction was zinc was being oxidized, going from zinc plus two, right? So let's write that over here. All right, that's my oxidation half reaction. And then of course, copper was going from copper plus two to copper. It was gaining two electrons, being reduced. That's my reduction reaction. And that's gonna be my reduction half cell. So the parts of the cell that we call each for the each half fraction we call our half cells. All right, so over here on the oxidation side, we're going to have to put in everything we need for this oxidation half reaction, okay? So we're going to need some zinc in aqueous solution. So let's draw a beaker. Okay. Throw in some zinc compound. What's your uh, favorite soluble zinc compound? Me, personally, I'm a fan of zinc nitrate. You are gonna say that? Okay. So let's throw in some zinc nitrate. Uh, the uh, anion's not gonna really matter. All we need is a zinc plus two. So I could have selected any one of your favorite uh, soluble zinc ionic compounds, but nobody wanted to. Well, let me know. You're keeping that. I know. You want to keep secrets from me. Mm -hmm. All right. So we also need some zinc, some zinc solids. So just put a piece of zinc in there. That's my zinc. All right. Then over on the reduction side, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to need everything involved in the reduction half reaction. All right, so we need some copper plus two. So we're gonna put in a soluble uh, copper uh, compound. Copper chloride. copper chloride, all right, I'll take it. Copper chloride. So Cu, again, the anion's not gonna do much. I personally would've went with copper sulfate, but that's okay, we're gonna disagree. And then we need some copper. Let's take some copper. Now we already know from that picture that this will happen. This, this reaction in green will spontaneously happen. Copper will oxidize the zinc. So if I could somehow, now they're physically separated, so they're not going to do anything until I connect them. And since it's just electrons that are doing the transferring, all I, have to, I would have to do is connect them via some conducting wire. So I can take a piece of you know, copper wire and I could connect them. And electrons would spontaneously flow from the zinc to the copper plus two in solution. Now, if I connected a wire to that, that would just be kind of boring. Electrons would just go from one beaker to the other. Okay. Normally, since we're generating this current, we want to use it for something, right? In the book, you'll see all these diagrams. They'll show you the lighting up a light bulb. I think that's kind of boring. As my lab knows, I use it to power up my iPod. Mm -hmm. 
That's my iPod. It's the old school iPod. I already got made fun of. I like it though. It clicks when it moves. Okay. When you're selecting the tracks, it clicks. Okay. You don't get those on those touch screens anymore. All right, so there's uh, my galvanic or voltaic cell generating current from a spontaneous redox reaction, and that's essentially a battery. That's what this is. That's what we're doing. Those are, that's what a galvanic cell is. It's a battery. We're using a chemical reaction to generate current. All right. But now that we've got our uh, iPod connected, what are we listening to? Any requests? Ice Ice Baby. Ice Ice Baby. How fitting. Yes, so Ice Ice Baby. Oh, jeez. It's the pen. I'm losing some... Losing some dexterity. All right, so Ice Ice Baby's jamming. All right. Well, it turns out that this is not a complete galvanic cell because we need one more component. Okay. It turns out that water is a poor capacitor. What a capacitor is, is uh, a capacitance measures some, abil some things ability to hold charge. So that's what capacitors do in electrical circuits. They hold charge. Water or aqueous solutions is a terrible capacitor. What are we doing over here in the oxidation half reaction? We're making zinc plus two. So zinc plus two is being produced here, so we're essentially creating excess positive charge. Over here, we're consuming copper plus two going to copper plus uh, a copper solid, so we're losing cations over here, creating excess negative charge from the spectator anion. All right, water that can't do that, so eventually this would stop pretty quickly. Uh, probably in the first chorus of Ice Ice Baby, and we know we want to uh, keep that jam going, so we need what's called a salt bridge. So a salt bridge just contains a uh, inert ionic compound. So in the lab you use sodium nitrate, that's fine. And what a salt bridge is it keeps the half cells charge neutral. So as we're creating zinc plus two over here to combat that buildup of positive charge, guess what? Nitrate would come over and hang out with it in the salt bridge. And as we're losing, using up copper plus two over here, and then we'd have excess chloride, the spectator anion, what would uh, happen? Well, sodium would come out and hang out with the chloride to keep it charge neutral. The only other things we uh, wanna maybe label is these uh, two pieces of metal that transfer the electrons from solution. Okay, so these are called electrodes, where the electron transfer occurs or starts, and each of them has a different name. The oxidation uh, half cells electrode is called the anode. So zinc is the anode in this electrochemical cell. And the electrode on the reduction half cell is called the cathode. Now it turns out that's why we call negative, ion, negative charge ions anions and positive charge ions cations because cations are attracted to the cathode anions are attracted to anodes. And the way I remember which one is which is, okay, anode, anion, what charge is that? What charge do you think of? 
an anode like an anion would be negative. Okay? It's not really negative, okay? But we usually do assign a negative uh, symbol to it. So the anode's negative. And then of course the cathode would be cation positive. Because cats have what? positive. Oh, it's coming back. Uh -huh. Yep. People are like, oh, no, you didn't. Okay, so uh, we know that the oxidation is going to lose electrons. Reduction is going to gain it. So electrons are going to flow that way. And so the signs help you know which one's the electrode or figure, help you figure out which way the electrons are going to flow. Electrons, are they going to be attracted to or repelled from a negative charge? Repelled from a negative charge. So you can think of the anode repelling the electrons. It's not really. It's from the potential difference. Uh, between the cells, and then they would be attracted to a positive charge, the cathode. Again, not really a positive charge, but that helps me remember which one's which. And that, in a nutshell, is a galvanic or valtaic cell. And this is batteries. So in your iPhone, in your iPod, there's two tiny little beakers that have the solutions in them that generate this current. True story. Definitely should believe me on that. <laughs>